everybody. We're going to do an example of an AC RC circuit, and we're going to do all the calculations for it, and we will measure the phase shift using a scope on multi sim. Okay, so um, let's switch to our circuit. There we go. So we have simple AC RC series circuit. R is 10K, C is 22 nanofarads, E is 100 volts at one kilohertz. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, we know that R is equal to 10K. So let's say that ZR is equal to 10K at zero degrees. Okay, so we'll express that in polar form. XC is equal to one over two pi FC. And that works out to um, 7.334K, all right? And if we express that as impedance, we'd say that ZC would be equal to 7.334K, an angle of negative 90, or in rectangular, let's say it's negative J, 7.334K. Right, or kilo ohms. So we have that. So let's figure out now ZT. So ZT series circuit. So we just add up the impedances. So we have ZR plus ZC, which would be 10K. I know we don't need to say zero degrees. I don't know why I put negative zero. But anyways, I just put that just so for learning purposes, forget the negative zero, plus ZC, which is 7.334K, an angle of negative 90. And there we get, if we're using our calculator, I will get 10K plus 7.334K, an angle of negative 90. So I get, 12.401K. An angle of negative 36.26. Okay, so that's what I get there. That's for ZT. So let's calculate IT. And IT is always E over ZT, which would be 100 volts. Again, we'll just put angle zero, make everybody happy. And ZT is 12.401K, an angle of negative 36.26 degrees. All right. And there we would get, if we did this on our calculator, 100 volts divided by. 12.401K, all right? So we end up with 8.064 milliamps. Okay, again, at an angle of, we have zero degrees divided by negative 36.26 degrees, so we subtract them. So it would be 36.26 degrees positive. All right, so that's what we have there. Now, Let's calculate VR. VR is equal to IT times R, which is um, 8.064 milliamps, an angle of 36.26 degrees times 10K. So there we would get um, 8.064 milli times 10K, all right? And it's 80.64 volts. And that is at an angle of, it's 36.26 plus zero. Okay, so uh, we add them when we're multiplying. So it would just stay at 36.26 degrees. Now, remember what we said before, 
in a resistor, the current through the resistor and the voltage across the resistor are always in phase, okay? They're always in phase. And that's because you're multiplying the current times an angle of zero, so that angle will stay the same in the answer. So VC would be IT times ZC, which would be 8.064 milliamps at an angle of 36.26 degrees times, and then ZC we had up here, 7.334K at an angle of negative 90. So there, what we would do is 8.064 milli, an angle of 36.26 times 7.334K, an angle of negative 90. So we get 59.14 volts. One four one volts at an angle of negative fifty three point seven four degrees. Okay, so as usual, VC and VR are ninety degrees apart. There are ninety degrees between thirty six point two six and fifty three point seven four. Okay, so if we um, if we wanted to take that and prove that with Kirchhoff's law. Uh, we would just say, get rid of that, that E is equal to VR plus VC, just to make sure we're right. And VR is 80.64 volts, an angle of 36.26 degrees, plus um, VC, which is 59.141 volts, an angle of negative 53.74. And if we added those together, we would get 80.64, an angle of 36.26, plus 59.141, an angle of negative 53.74. So we get 100.002. an angle of 0 0.0038, okay? 0, 0.00, because it says milli, so it's angle of 0 0.0038 degrees, which is approximately 100 volts angle zero. All right, so those are our calculations for this circuit. Now, Let's take this and let's go measure our phase shift on multi-sim. So we have an angle of 53, negative 53.74 degrees. So VC lags E by 53.74 degrees. All right. So let's see what we get in multi-sim. Well, let's check our, our um, magnitudes first. So they are off by a little bit on multi-SIM, but they are close. We have 81.05, and our calculated value was 80.6 for VR. And then we have 58.5 for VC, and I have 59.14 for VC in, um, in multi-SIM. And we have 8.114 milliamps in multi-SIM, and we calculated 8.064. All right, now let's go to phase shift. Let's bring up our, uh, our phase shift. Let's go back to how we calculate phase shift, all right? So we have our two signals. We have our two signals, okay? E and VC in our first case. So VC lags. E, right? VC lags E. So we have our full cycle 
which is our period, and it's 360 degrees. And we have the time between the two signals, our shift. And this is delta T, all right? So the period of the signal, frequency is equal to one kilohertz, okay? So the period is one over frequency, which is going to equal one millisecond, all right? And the formula for phase shift was delta T over T times 360. So we need to calculate delta T. How do we do that? Let's go back to multisim. There we go. Let's bring this up. So now we have channel one on our scope is going to E and channel two is measuring VC, okay? So we have our signals here. So let's freeze the signal with the single sequence key. There we go. Every scope has a single sequence or capture or, or something of that nature. <laughs> now, let's spread this out a bit. Here's our gap. We could see, this is channel one. This is channel two. And we can see that channel two is lagging channel one. And we just need to figure out how much time is in that gap. So let's spread this out a bit, okay? Let's change our vertical scale. So we are crossing the zero line at a more perpendicular angle or closer to perpendicular, a steeper angle. So let's see how far we could stretch this as long as we have both signals on the screen. So we use our horizontal positioning there. Okay, so let's make it a little more, make the signal a little steeper. There we go. Okay, so let's move it so we have a definite start point. There. So the distance between these two signals, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half divisions times 20 microseconds. So we take our horizontal scale, which is 20 microseconds per division, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Okay, so let's go back to our trusty pen and paper. All right. Delta T is equal to number of divisions times the time per division, which is our horizontal scale, okay? So what we have is 7.5 divisions times 20 microseconds, okay? That, that's what the scale was. If you remember, I'll just switch back there quickly so you can see it. There's 20 microseconds per division and seven and a half divisions, okay? There we go. And this gives us, if we multiply this out, this gives us 150 microseconds, all right? So, Delta T is going to equal, or our phase shift is going to equal delta T over T times 360 degrees. It's going to equal 150 microseconds divided by our period is one millisecond times 360. So if we took that in our calculator and we kept all the units, 150 micro divided by 100, by uh, one milli times 360, and we get 54 degrees. We get 54 degrees. Now, if you remember our calculation, we calculated 53.74 degrees and it is lagging, okay? We know it's lagging from the display. Now, if we wanted to measure the phase angle of VR, what we need to do 
is we need to switch the order in the circuit of the resistor and the capacitor. Okay, so let's turn our scope off. I'm gonna stop the circuit and let's get rid of all these accessories. All right. Let's swap these around. So we need to put R as our last component. There we go, and we'll put channel two on the resistor. There. So let's start the circuit up. Now, let me turn this back to normal. Back on the screen here. There. Now we see, if you remember, R had a positive angle, 36.26, which means if we look at channel two, channel two is now leading channel one. Okay? There's channel two. And there's channel one. So channel two is now leading channel one. We need to figure out by how much. So let's do what we did before. Let's stretch this out. And now let's make the angle that we cross through zero a little steeper. There we go. Let's move this over a bit. Let's see if we can stretch this out a little. Oh, we had it. Okay, let's go as far as we can go. Let's get ourselves a starting point. Let's make it a little steeper if we can. There we go. And we have one, two, three, four, five divisions at 20 microseconds. Okay, we have five divisions at 20 microseconds. All right, remember that. So now, go back to our sheet. So this here was for VC. And now for VR, delta T is equal to number of divisions, times the time per division. And that is, we had five divisions times 20 microseconds per division. Okay, so if we were to take that, we would see that this cancels out divisions and we end up with 100 microseconds for delta T, okay? So our phase shift is delta T over T times 360, which would be 100 microseconds over one millisecond, that didn't change, one over one kilohertz, times 360. And that gives us, okay, 100 micro divided by one milli times 360, and that gives us 36 degrees. And if you remember our calculations, we have 36.26, okay? So we're on the money there. All right, so that is how we calculate what we need calculated for a series RC circuit in AC. And then we used, micro, we used a multi-SIM to, um, we used multi-SIM to, uh, to confirm the phase angles and the magnitudes. And we'll just leave it at that. So thank you for watching. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.